All right, folks, so welcome to today's show. Uh, in today's episode, what we are going to do is talk a little bit about basic Raspberry Pi or Linux commands. One of the things I've noticed is that Raspberry Pis are starting to become popular once again with the folks who view this channel. And I wanted to provide some sort of help or tutorial or guideline that would help them get along and be able to navigate the Raspberry Pi a little bit better. So if you guys like this video, what I'll do is I'll do another basic series and then potentially an intermediate or advanced if that's something that you're looking for. Also, I wanted to mention that if you really like this video, why don't you go ahead, click the thumbs up, subscribe, share somewhere on social media. It really helps to promote the video and helps content viewers like you find stuff like this to watch on the internet. Anyhow, that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here is the desktop for my Raspberry Pi, and uh, I have a terminal window open. We're going to use that terminal window to start going through some of these basic commands. Before we get started, I did want to say that linked below, you'll find a Raspberry Pi playlist where I show things like building a Raspberry Pi, installing Raspberry Pi operating systems, and even some application installations. I would encourage everybody to go ahead and check that out before getting started here um, if you need help getting your Raspberry Pi up and running. The other thing is, is that to access a terminal window up here, what you do is you just click on this terminal icon and it will open a window up. Now I've got one over here that's sized appropriately so that way you can see me, which I know is fun for everybody, down in the lower left hand corner. So let's just go ahead, go to the terminal window and get started. One of the things that you'll notice is our command prompt and it says pi at pi 4. And so the reason it says pi is because I'm logged in as the user pi. And then the at pi4 is my computer name. It's the name that I've assigned to my Raspberry Pi. So we're going to start off with a command that I use pretty frequently, and it's called pwd. Uh, some people say in, says it's for present working directory or print working directory. But when I hit this command, what it does is it shows the directory that I'm using or that I'm located in on the command line. So here you can see it's slash home slash pi. Again, PWD shows my working directory. From my directory, what I can do, I can type clear and it clears my screen, is I can get a listing of everything in this directory by typing the ls command. Here you can see there's a file called address and then a bunch of different directories. I can do ls dash a. When I do a dash a, it's called an argument. A doesn't stand for argument, A stands for all. So I'm going to list the contents of my directory with the ls command using the dash A argument, which will show everything in the directory. And then here you can see a number of files that start with a dot or a period. When you have a file that starts with a dot or a period, it's hidden from the system. We could talk more about that later if necessary. The other thing I can do for my ls is I can do an argument called dash L and that gives me a list format. Uh, it's not just all the spitting out everything that's in a directory. It actually does it in a list. In this list, you can see things like permissions or directory uh, designations in where you see the DRs for directory. Then you have your write, your execute, your read access. Um, and then you also have the owner, the group, uh, and you have some time stamping. Another thing you can do is you can combine these arguments. So I can do ls-la which will give me a list and it will give me all or everything that has the period in front of it. Let me go ahead and clear my screen. Okay, what we're going to do now is I'm just going to do a quick PWD and you can see my working directory is home slash pi. If I need to change my directory, what I can do is I can use the CD command. Here I can change my directory by going CD dot dot and that just takes me to the home directory PWD. Now, if I want to go into my personal directory, I can go CD and then I can use a tilde. And then now you'll see that I'm back in home slash pi, pi being the user, I'm logged in as pi. Uh, just quickly, I can type who am I? And I can see who I'm logged in as. It returns that you're logged in as the user pi. Now, when you use a CD command, you can also change directories to other, other directories using, um, here I'll show you if I go slash OPT. So that now changes to me to this slash opt directory where certain pieces of software or certain configurations are made. 
I can go to the root directory by going CD root. And now I can do a quick LS and here you can see that op directory is one of the things that's listed. If I want to go back to my home directory again, I can go CD tilde. And now I'm back at home slash pi. One of the other things is let me go back to the root directory. Now here, if I go PWD, it's just going to tell me I'm at slash, which is the beginning of my file system. I can also go CD dollar home which is a variable, not a location that refers to my home directory. Once I do that, PWD once again shows me I'm in home slash pi. Now let's go ahead and clear the screen. I'm gonna do an LS at my home directory and you can see different directories in my home directory. One of them is called documents. I can go CD, D, O, C, U, and then hit my tab key and that finishes that word for me. So now I can go PWD, I can see them in my documents. I can do an LS and then I can see different files that I have there. CD dot dot takes me back to my home directory. So that should really help you out for in terms of navigating these directories. Now here from my home directory, let me clear the screen. I can make directories MKDIR space test LS and then now you should be able to see a directory called test. So I can do LS dash LA and then you can see that test directory right here. Let me clear the screen. If I want to remove that directory, it's as simple as R-M-D-I-R-T-E-S-T. -T. And now I do an LS and it's gone. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to move or we're going to copy some files around and we can see what that does. So in this particular case, what I want to do is I want to create a file and I can do that by issuing a command called touch, T-O-U-C-H. And we'll just call this backup. Now when I issue an ls command, I have a file called backup. You can see it right here. Now let me go ahead and, and recreate the directory mkdir test, T-E-S-T. Now I'm going to use a copy command called cp, and then I'm going to call this backup file, and then I'm going to copy that. backup to and then by typing this command that's going to copy it into the test directory and call the file backup to now if i print my directory i'm in home pi cd test ls there's backup to now if i wanted to edit this file called backup to i can use a program called nano n-a-n-o b-a-c-k Using a tab key, I can complete that. And you can see that this file is empty. And I can go ahead and I can type something in here. Ape is icy. I hit Control X to get out of Nano and then Y to save my changes. I'm just doing an introduction to Nano. I'm not giving an in-depth presentation on how to use it. Nano is a file editor similar to Notepad on your Windows machine. I would encourage everybody to get used to using it. It's one of the more simple file editors in a Linux or Raspberry Pi system. Um, now what I can do here is, let's just say I wanna move the contents of that file to another file. So I can do MV backup to, to new backup. And what I can do now is LS. And I've got a file called new backup and backup two is now gone. I can use nano, like we, we, we showed uh, earlier, to take a look at the contents and edit the contents of that file. Let me go ahead and exit out, control X. Now, instead of moving the contents from one file to another one, I can also copy that. So what I can do here is CP, new backup to old backup and now when I do ls I've got when now when I do ls I've got both files and this would allow me to make additions or edits to the new backup file so let's just say go back to new backup say n a n actually using my up key I can go back to new backup and I can change this I don't know, it's just typing a bunch of jibber jabber. All right, we are going to exit out. We are going to save our changes. 
Now, one of the things I want to show you is a file call or command called more. So I can go more new backup. What this allows me to do is to actually see the contents of the file without editing it or open it in nano. And you can see it here. Now, if I hit the up arrow, I can come back and actually edit my command. And now I can say, well, let me see what is in old backup. And then you can see that that just says ape is icy. So that way you can see the contents are different. We made a copy of new backup to old backup, and then we went in and we edited new backup. And so that should help us out there. Okay, now we're going to take a look at another command that's pretty helpful, and it's called ifconfig, I-F-C-O-N-F-I-G. And that stands for your interface configuration for your network adapter or your networking interface. If I hit that, I get all kinds of stuff that comes out. And maybe this isn't important to me, but it'll show you things like my IP address. So for example, on WAN, my wireless LAN 0, I've got 192.168.1.125 as my INET address. So maybe I want to take a look at this and I just want to look at the INET addresses that are associated to my various interfaces. I can use this tool, which is called a pipe and it, my keyboard is right under my, back, my backspace key. And what that allows me to do is take the output of the if command and pipe it into another pet command for further manipulation. So I'm gonna pipe this to grep, and that says grep, G-R-E-P. Now grep is a really handy tool that uh, once you get used to it, you'll be using it all the time. And it's like global resource expression locator, I think, but I don't know how locator and P are the same thing. But what it allows us to do is you remember that we're looking for INET addresses. If I hit this, what it does is it just pulls out every line from the if command, the if config command that had the word INET in here. Now I can easily read my internet addresses. And that's pretty handy. Another thing I wanted to show you is, is that let's just say you want to learn more about the grep command. You can go man grep. Now man is a command that searches for manual entries for the commands that you're interested in. So once I do this, I get a whole bunch of options. It shows me the different arguments, how to use grep, a uh, bunch of instructions here. It gives me examples and will teach me how to use that. I'm just gonna go ahead and control Z out of that. And one of the other things I would encourage you to do is man nano. And then that way you can learn about the nano editor uh, that we looked at earlier today. Now, I know that was basic uh, stuff, and I hope it wasn't too boring, and hopefully you learned something. But again, the goal here was just to expose people to some options or some things they can do when working on the command line in a Linux or a Unix environment. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, I encourage you to post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.